The NFL deadline is almost here. So today we're going to talk about teams that should be buying or selling and also some players that could potentially get traded. All right, let's start off with, I think we both agree the biggest buyer should be, well, one of the biggest buyers, the Detroit Lions. One? Ever since the Aiden yeah. Hutchinson injury, um, not bad. But if you want to be a big playoff threat, you are the best team in the NFC by far right now who has played consistently well. And obvious, the obvious thing is to replace Aiden Hutchinson, right? Yes, you want to add more depth. So one, you agree with that, I'm assuming. And two, when is Adarius Smith or Aziz Oshilari going to be a Detroit Lion? So yeah, of course I 100% agree because they are a bona fide contender. Nobody can take that away from them. Um, it's simply they have been the most consistent team in the NFC. They have been in, out of the NFC preseason contenders. They have been the only team that actually look like themselves. Like unlike the 49ers or the Eagles or the, especially the Cowboys as well. And the biggest competition they face is in division, which is as of, the, now, yeah. as of right now the Green Bay Packers, and who they just played a big game. Yeah. Uh, overall, like the Lions have to be on call. Is getting like you said, as a Darius Smith, as he's Ojolari. Are they gonna be Aiden Hutchinson? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want an Aiden they're Hutchinson, good. they're good, but they're not gonna be any close. <laughs> if you want an Aiden Hutchinson, I mean, you're gonna. I'm gonna just ask you right now: Is Max Crosby and Miles Garrett getting traded? Probably not. So the next best thing is not like, and as as people always say, defense wins championships, right? Your offense is all power. We saw that. We see that right now. Actually, you don't even just saw that. Um, so at the end of the day, you gotta address that pass rush, especially. Um, and anyone else you could add just for depth purposes on both sides of the ball. Right, because it's still what we're still halfway there, so it's not even like the season's ending. This is your only chance to um, beef up your team essentially, and yeah, they have to be there. Let's move on. Yeah, let's <laughs> I have move my on. next team that having the same, not as high contendership, but they're they're one of the worst teams in getting sacks and all that, and that's the Atlanta Falcons, and that was our biggest concern heading into the season with them, and they added. Um, Justin Simmons for the secondary side of things, but the big one was Matthew Judon, and they're still struggling on the pass rush. Um, yes, we could go back to the draft and say they could have gotten Leatu, Latu, Jared versus whoever, Dallas Turner, whatever. But same thing with the um, the Lions. If they really want to make a push and make some noise and make a run in the playoffs, they have to do exactly that on the defensive side of the ball to get pass rush help any way possible. Yeah, like that's basically the most important position on the defense is try to put the other team's quarterback on the ground. Is and you're gonna need some elite pass rusher, and they do have that in Judon. But at the end of the day, he could get easily double teamed every time he does go for the rush. Yeah, and that's the biggest issue with Atlanta right now. And like Atlanta hasn't really, you know, turned into their own. Now kind of kind of like what we expect them to be. Yeah, because they have been ups and downs. Right, every time we feel like you know they're coming off a good week, good couple of weeks, then they put that performance in against Seattle. Right, so it's just like simply. But they, they got to figure out their consistency-wise. And I feel like getting to the quarterback constantly alleviates... Uh, yeah, figure, getting to a quarterback constantly solves a lot of those issues. So, okay. So, I'm looking at an article from USA Today right now who have, like, a list of potential players. I already mentioned two of those. And obviously, no surprise, Darius Smith to the Lions is what they said. But they had a pick for the Falcons. So, do you agree that Emmanuel Ogba does get traded from Miami? Keep in mind, the AFC has been pretty bad. So, they have a chance still with Tua back. And and obviously, I'm not gonna ask you. The fit is perfect for yeah. The fit's the there, Falcons. obviously. Like, but do you think Ogba gets traded? Um, another big name that could be. It available. depends, right? Like, uh, like obviously, we're recording this before the week and Sunday games. Yeah, we don't know like what how Miami is gonna be, and a lot a lot determines on it. Like this, like if the Miami Dolphins like get absolutely destroyed this weekend, there could be a case where they could you know sell a lot of pieces, and Ogba being a little bit up there in age. It's a good piece to sell as well. They get a little bit of value. And uh, Ogba, again, like you said, the fit's going to be there. You get someone, you know, other than uh, Judon and other than Gritty Jarrett and, like, just someone else to, like, for the offensive line to account for. So, yeah, obviously the fit's there. Dolphins, it just really depends on, like, because they're, what, 2-6, and six, I believe? 2-5? and five? Yeah, because they lost to... I think they had a bye, so they might be 2-5. Yeah, 2-5. Five. Five. Right, so, like, again, the one more loss, they're going to need to really go on a win streak and it really got to start now and I don't know how they're going to do that you know if they don't really win on Sunday exactly so um, that's yeah so that's the Falcons issue again like the NFC is open outside of uh, after the, the Lions there as well Um, I'm not going to get into it this much go check out our Indianapolis Colts team because we said why they have to be buyers 
because of the decision they made of the benching of Anthony Richardson. We're going to move on past that and make sure you guys click that video. It um, It's the video has already been out. So check that video out and it'll be at the end of this video for you guys to click as well. But similar to the Colts, though, like a team that we said that there might be 50-50 with make to make to the playoffs, the Chargers, right? Um, I'm not going to go too much into it. I think there should be a buyer and th they're one name that I popped up that will help. And listen, their biggest weakness is pass catchers to help uh, Justin Herbert, who's been playing uh, a lot better since his injury is to reunite with Mike Williams. So, will Mike Williams get traded because they got Devontae Adams there now? And when he comes to the Chargers, it's a familiar... I, I can't say familiar offense because that is a different... <laughs> a different... Uh, familiar place. Uh, different coaches, but a familiar place with a familiar quarterback. So, the thing with the NFL deadline is it's pretty dead. Usually. Right? I mean, this year, it started spice, it spiced yeah, they, up early. Yeah, I know. Like, a lot of good pieces are already, already gone. So, like, at the end of the day, like, I could... I won't be surprised if any of the names that we mentioned don't get moved. But, like, when you're looking in the wide receiver market, that he's the only one who's left. And the, do the Jets really need him? Like, Gary Wilson. Darius Slayton and all these guys are also there. Yeah, yeah. KJ Osborne. But, yeah. You know, like, a, a guy who was actually, like, once really, really good. Yeah. And he still can be as long as he stays healthy. And he's kind of showing that, like, the regression this year because of him not being on the field the last few years, basically. And uh, with Garrett Wilson doing what Garrett Wilson has done the last couple Amazing of catch. And then Devontae Adams and Garrett Wilson partnership actually looked like a solid duel. This, uh, with, with their win against the And the tight end is Tyler Conklin, who's pretty good himself. Yeah, like, there's not really a massive need for Mike Williams, especially if Alan Lazard is healthy and being exactly. a wide receiver three, right? So it does make sense for the Jets to trade him. It does make sense for the Chargers to get him. But if I'm also the Chargers, like, I don't necessarily... Because at the end of the day, like, you're not expecting anything more Chargers this year, right? Yeah. Right? No, it, Like, they're doing good, and that's a plus for them. But overall, like, I but, just feel like just let it ride out and try to find... But if it's, like, a late pick, like a 7th, 6th from this year or even next year, I I'm, I don't... I just don't... It. I don't, don't necessarily think the Chargers need to force the issue. Yeah, no, that's That's what fair. I'm trying to say, right? But a but, team that... But, yeah, but exactly, like, like you said, they could use a Mike Williams. How are you with the Commanders, then? Because I have them as a list of buyers. Yeah, the, with, the, like with the commanders is because it's different. Just surprised everybody. Right, because one, like, at the end of the day, like, when you're looking at the competition between the conferences, like, the NFC has more competitions for the wildcard spot, but AFC have the main contenders yeah. at the end of the day, right? And so you're saying the commanders should still buy and don't waste this, like, the contract year. Yeah, like, don't, I would say so, right? Their, their defense is actually over outperforming what I thought it was going to be. Shout out to Dan Quinn. Yeah, shout out to Dan, Dan Quinn. And uh, Jay and Daniel is like, there's nothing yeah. more need to be said about it. He's been absolutely amazing, right? And it's just simply like, if you could just find some ways to like improve your team, like why not do it? Because like right now, the way you, the type of football you're playing, the way you've been playing, it doesn't feel like anyone in division can really slow you down. I know you still got, you know, Dallas and Philly like twice, I believe, each. But overall, like you've handled business so far. And, uh, you have this good, good a bit lead in your division, and uh, if you win your division, you're gonna be in a prime spot, and then that, and that's what home playoff game, home playoff game, right? And it's just gonna be, I think, potentially an opportunity miss because the Commanders have more of a chance to make a deep playoff run than the Chargers, so that's why the Commanders, in my opinion, I don't, I'm not saying necessarily they're like they're like like a blow, way like, better football team, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, the teams they have to get through are not as daunting as the Chargers if they win the division, if, especially, and the Chargers not winning the division, yeah, right. Um, last team I have here before you have any ones that you want to throw out, the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, the Cincinnati Bengals. Defense help, I think. Uh, definitely. Just just get some defense help. Maybe some O line help. But it just it and I don't think any necessarily move is gonna like turn the Bengals around at the end of the day. Like, Joe Burrow said the next game is a must the, win the fix game. the fix has to be internal. Yeah. Day. I don't think anything else, nothing available could really make them and like turn the tide for them at the end of the day. Because if your offense is inconsistent like how it has been it doesn't matter what defensive pieces you add because your offense is the identity of this football team okay um I, that's the teams i have but i just saw one pittsburgh for wide receiver any type of wide receiver help i guess yeah like mike williams mike williams um <laughs> darius slayton's name has been out there kj osborne from the patriots up another because like the houston texans might want to replace yes he's not gonna be they're not gonna be as good as stefan diggs but someone to at least give some pressure off of um, Nick Nico Collins when he gets back as well. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I'm like, like the Pittsburgh, I think, got to get one just because, you know, Pickens is great. But after him, it's not much, right? 
Like Van Jefferson as a three is way better than Van Jefferson as a two. And I'm not saying KJ Osborne or uh, Darius Slater or Mike Williams is going to like, you know, be yeah. any better. But like at the end of the day, like you got to have options. Yeah. And I feel like any of these guys will help, I guess. They just need to find versatility in that, right? Because, exactly. Like how the Bills, like, you know, they kind of have each wide receiver is kind of different style. Like they're, they have each different strength. Like Amari Cooper is route running. Keon Coleman's contested guy. Yeah. Um, Khalil Shakir is his speed. Right, so like, because of that, I feel like Pittsburgh could add that type of element, right, with them. That I don't necessarily like Mike Williams because again, he's yeah. Ca- well, ca- Dar- Darius Slayton, then. Well, yeah, like yeah. a guy like Darius Slayton, maybe is a little bit different. Okay, yeah. So, I'm gonna throw a list of teams. Just tell me they're buyers or sellers. All right. Um, we know the obvious sellers, like the terrible teams, like the Panthers and the Titans this year. I threw in the Browns for obvious reasons. I threw the Saints. Do you agree with the Saints? I would agree with that. Okay. Um, the where to go? Uh shoot. <laughs> um okay, let's start out with the Rams. Cooper Cop. No, they shouldn't be a No, seller. Rams are not seller. Uh Ar- Arizona. No. The Just don't even put anyone in NFC West, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> okay. They all have a chance. This is the one that I want to talk about. The Dallas Cowboys. Where do you put them right now? Because according to USA today, they said they should trade for Travis ATN, which I guess we agree with because they need to run game. But are they it's Jerry Jones. You were you know the meme from the he forgot free agency existed. <laughs> but yeah. what do you think the Dallas Cowboys should do, not will do? I mean, the pieces they try to they their bench Ezekiel Elliott this uh, this past weekend yeah. technically as well. Their pieces like the pieces that obviously bring the most value are like your core players. So you're not gonna yeah. get rid of them. They're three and four for reference. Five and two are the Eagles, and six and two are the Commanders. I think you just gotta. I think. Buy, right? Like because it, it's the Cowboys. Like, what, like it's not even like obviously because it's the Cowboys get so much attention, and respectably, like, is Jerry Jones really gonna, and they're like whatever Dallas Cowboys is really gonna let this year fail as bad yeah. as it's been failing? Like, there's got to be a point in time where like he's someone's got to step in and do something. Yeah, and that's kind of been the issue with the Cowboys is like I felt like nobody has came in and done something right this past like off season and all that. Yeah. Time. So like this is a perfect time. ATN's been struggling on the Jaguars. Tank, um, well, Tank Bigsby is a mid, like kind of taking over the uh, running back one reps basically, and he deserves because he's actually been. Wait, yeah, needs to get paid, I believe. Yeah, so as well. like, I, it's a shout. I don't think there's like I said, a lot of the big names are all kind of off the board. So like, there's not anyone that necessarily could like save your season, come in and like save your season just like that. But overall, like, at the end of the day, them being the Cowboys, I just ex- kind of expect them to buy. I don't really expect them to, like, really throw away the season and yeah, sell. that's fair. So then, this is, a, this is an interesting last team that we're going to talk about here. The Denver Broncos. They're 5-3. and three, So they're in that playoff. They're in the playoffs right now. They're in the mix. But we project them not to make it. Um, If you guys don't know who we predict, and make sure you guys check out our um LA Rams are dangerous video that's where we talk about who our playoff teams are going to be uh, at the midpoint season and we said the Denver Broncos will miss if an offer comes for a guy like Horton Sutton um obviously Pastor Town extended and we know he's not going to be in the mix or like any of their pieces should they just entertain it and just ride out the season that way um you know how like teams you know how, I think the Detroit Tigers did this is sold he gets to me the playoffs right yeah should they do something similar to that because no one thought they were going to be this good let's just face it right just face Sean Payton got the culture Bo Nix is getting better as the weeks go on I think they should, if they get an offer, they should sell. Um, yes, you want a help. I guess it kind of hurts because Bo Nix's number one target is Cortland Sutton. But at the end of the day, are you really going to do anything, right? I know, but th- that's why I don't want to entertain the Cortland Sutton trade talk specifically just because... But other pieces then? Because he's so vital to Bo Nix's development. Yeah. And that's that's the number one priority, developing yeah. Bo Nix. And uh, having a good wide, wide receiver is going to be key. Yeah. Right? And... Uh, that's that's really I think they just again like the Chargers stay put, right? They they made the playoffs great. Like at the end of the day, you're getting some like valuable experience that like you know you're not gonna really get from your young QBs. Yeah, especially in their rookie year. But overall, like they don't necessarily need to add anything. They still gotta build obviously a roster still around like their core players and Pastor Tan and Bo Nix on each side of the ball. Personally, I would stay, but like again, if there's if an offer comes, if an, like you could talk about it, but like if if I I don't think you necessarily gotta like you know pull the trigger right away, but like maybe you could like get something v- more valuable than what you give up, then you definitely do it. Okay, so last thing to close it out, we've so far the trade deadline has been a success because we haven't seen guys like Devonte Adams, Amari Cooper. I mean, we've seen Amari Cooper I think trade in the past, but like Devonte Adams, no one like that usually gets traded middle of the year. 
what's going to happen by deadline day when if we do even come back are we coming back for a recap of video essentially is what i'm asking i don't necessarily think so like it will be like obviously in our probably week 10 preview there will be some sort of like obviously reaction to it yeah but i don't think there's gonna be a, like a, a, make a, a big video like big this. news where like we're gonna have to make make a full-blown separate wi- video to uh to like react to the trade deadline yeah at the end that's just how the nfl trade deadline goes and it's kind of hard like um, it's kind of hard to move i'll predict that players. we're gonna get something t- this this year because i just a lot of the nfl season has been weird this it's year. been weird so that's i'm gonna i'm gonna go a little bit on a hotter take i guess because i do agree with you for the most part nothing usually happens in a lot of the sports trade deadlines with the hype up but i feel like this year i mean so far it has surpassed what happened in previous years i feel like we're gonna get some action and maybe not, uh, i'll say this one out of the blue trade, kind of like Thomas Hurdle to the Vegas Golden Knights type thing. Yeah, but that's the thing with the NFL and compared to other sports, right? Like, at the end of the day, the other sports have a lot of, like, individuality in them in terms of, like, in baseball, you get traded. The one thing you have to worry about was just, like, your at-bat or, yeah. you know, your fielding, right? Football is, like, you got to like, learn the you gotta playbook. and playbook, new scheme, new system. Like, and you, like in the NHL and NBA, at the end of the day, like, I know you're part of a team and all that stuff, like, when you're on the court or on the ice. But at the end of the day... It's easier to pick up than football. Yes, it would be way easier to pick up than football. In our opinion, yeah. yeah. Like, in terms of, like, NBA especially, just because, yeah. like, at the end of the day, you're, you're going to be worried about your shots and where you need to be. Yeah. And the NHL, like, yeah, like, obviously, you just got to worry about where you got to be on the ice. NFL is similar way, but you got to know what play it is. You know, what play, <laughs> what the... What type of words they use as well? Yeah, exactly. right? like, what type I mean, of language? Every team, yeah. every team has different words, and every yeah, yeah, it makes sense because at the end of the day, you're not trying to expose your players. Exactly. <laughs> but but that's pretty much it from us. Um, hopefully there is a lot of stuff to talk about trade deadline recap. So if we do hit the post notification bell, because we'll drop that after tra- the, the trade deadline. Best believe it, Miles Garrett is not getting traded. <laughs> it's not getting traded. <laughs> but comment down below what you guys think. What big moves will happen? Like this video, comment and subscribe. Hit that post notification bell as I mentioned because two videos are popping up for you to watch. Um, We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.